Hello, today we'll be working with real life applications dealing with geometry. So one of the most useful things for trigonometry is going to be when you have an angle of elevation. So that will happen when you have two objects at different heights or one of them is elevated, meaning it's higher. So let's look at a picture. So let's pretend that we have a person. That person is looking at the top of a building. If they were to look straight ahead, you will have your horizontal line, and then you will have what's called the line of sight, which is the line that connects the two objects together. So looking at this example, this will be my line of sight. The angle of elevation will always happen between the horizontal line and the line of sight. So this angle right here will be my angle of elevation. Keep that in mind as we work through some of the problems. You will always have a right angle, meaning you're able to use any of the trig ratios to solve when you're working these problems. So looking at example number one, a fire department's longest ladder is 110 feet long and the safety regulation states that they can use it for rescues up to 100 feet of the ground. What is the maximum safe angle of elevation for the rescue ladder? So we're going to start by drawing a picture. So we're going to start drawing the ground as a horizontal line. I'm going to draw a building and then I'm going to draw the ladder coming up from the ground all the way to the top of the building. So this is going to be my ladder. They gave us some important information in the problem. They told us that the longest ladder measures 110 feet long. So I'm going to put 110 for the measurement on, on my ladder. They also told me that they can only go 100 feet off the ground. So that will be this line on the side, meaning that line can measure up to 100 feet. Again, I can see my right angle here. So I'm going to start labeling. Uh, my information. I'm looking for my angle of elevation. So now I know that this is my hypotenuse and my right triangle. And I know this is my opposite and my adjacent is at the bottom. So I don't have any information for the adjacent. So I have to use my opposite and I have to use my hypotenuse. So going back to a sharp trig ratios, remember? So, ka. So I have opposite and hypotenuse, so I have to use sine. So in this example, the sine of theta, I don't know what theta is. That's what I'm looking for. It's equal to my opposite, which measures 100, divided by my hypotenuse, which measures 110. After that, remember, in order for you to solve, you have to take the inverse on both sides. So my theta is going to be equal to the inverse sine of 100 divided by 100 and 10. Put that in your calculator. Once you put that in your calculator, remember your mode must be in degrees. You do get your 65.38 degrees as your answer. So again, nothing hard. Everything is pretty easy once you set up in your picture. Let's look at another example. So now we have the meter, a 12 meter flagpole that casts a nine meter shadow, and we're looking for the angle of elevation created by the sun. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw my ground. I'm gonna go up, drawing my flagpole, creating my flag. Now I'm gonna draw the angle of elevation created by the ground, right? So this is your shadow. They gave us the measurement of the shadow, which is nine meters. And then they gave us the length of the pole of the flag, which is 12 meters. I'm going to put that information there. And again, we're looking for the angle of elevation. Remember, created by the line of sight, which is here in red. And then the horizontal line at the bottom, creating your right angle on the right side. Uh, now that we know that information, we know that this is your opposite side and this is your adjacent. So I know I have to use tangent. 
So the tangent of theta, I don't know what the angle measurement is. I'm looking for it. It's equal to the opposite, which measures 12, divided by my adjacent, which measures 9. Again, in order for me to solve, I have to find the inverse tangent on both sides. Once I put that into my calculator, I get around 53.13 degrees. Let's look at angle of depression now. So angle of depression is going to be very similar, but now you're going to be looking down at an object. So let's say I have a building with a person standing on top, and now I'm looking down at a little flower somewhere on the ground. So again, I'm going to draw my horizontal line. If I were to be looking straight ahead, I'm going to draw my line of sight connecting the two objects. And then the angle of the pressure will be right there, right in between them. So now let's look at an actual example with some measurements. So now we have an airplane that is flying at a height of two miles above the level ground. The angle of depression from the plane to the foot of a tree is 15 degrees. What is the distance that the plane must fly to be directly above the tree? So again, I'm going to draw my ground. I'm going to draw my beautiful tree. I'm going to draw my airplane somewhere flying over here. gave us. So we know that the distance from the airplane to the ground is two miles. And we also know that the angle of the pressure is 15 degrees. So I'm going to draw my horizontal line and then I'm going to draw my line of sight connecting the airplane to the ground. And then I want to figure out the distance that the plane must travel in order to be directly above the tree. So that will be this distance right here. And like I said, my angle of depression has to be 15 degrees between the horizontal, which is here, and the line of sight, which is here. It is very important to put the angle of depression in the right place, or else you're going to get all the wrong answers. Looking at the picture, the distance between the airplane and the ground is two miles. It doesn't matter where it is, it will always be two miles. You want the plane to be flying straight across. So if this is two miles on the left, then it's going to be two miles on the right side as well. So now I can label my sides. I know that the two miles is my opposite, and I know that the one that I'm looking for is my adjacent. So looking at our shortcut again, I'm going to write it on top. The only option that I have is to use tangent. So in order for me to solve, I'm going to say the tangent of 15 degrees, because I do have a measurement now, is equal to 2 over x. Don't forget, multiply both sides by x. I get x tangent of 15 equals to 2. Divide both sides by tangent of 15. Once I solve, I do get my x to be around 7.46 miles. And I'm done with that problem. So again, pretty easy, very basic trig that we're doing. Looking at the next example, Lindsay is 9 0.2 meters up, and the angle of depression from Lindsay to Pete is 79 degrees. Find the distance from Pete to the base of the building to the nearest tenth of a meter. So let's start by drawing our picture. Have a building. Lindsay is standing up here. Pete is standing on the ground somewhere. And I know that the distance from Lindsay to the ground is 9.2 meters. 
I know that the angle of depression is 79. So again, I'm going to start by drawing the horizontal line. And then I'm going to start by drawing the line of sight. And the angle of depression will be right in between those lines. They told us that the angle of depression is 79 degrees. I can connect this to the ground, creating my right angle. And if I know that this side is 9.2, I know that this side is also 9.2. And then I'm trying to figure out the distance between peat and the base of the building, which is this red line, which I know is also congruent to this red line above it. So then that this that distance will be represented by the variable x. So now that I have all that information, I can start naming my sides. So I know that the 9.2 meters is my opposite. And I know that my X is my adjacent. So now I have to use tangent because that's the only one with opposite and adjacent on it. So I have to do the tangent of 79. I do have my angle measurement. is equal to opposite, which is 9.2 divided by X. Multiply both sides by X. X tangent of 79 equals 9.2. Divide both sides by tangent of 79, plug that into your calculator, you get x equals 1.79 meters. Just to make sure, let's do one last example to make sure that we're able to draw the picture. So on this example, we have a cliff that is 80 feet above the sea. From the cliff, the angle of depression to a boat is 35 degrees. How far is the boat from the base of the cliff? Round your answer to the nearest one decimal place. So again, I'm going to start by drawing my cliff here. And then drawing my ocean with the boat on it. So now I know that the cliff is 80 feet. So I'm going to put that measurement here. And I know that the angle of depression is 35. Don't forget, draw your horizontal line and then draw your line of sight. Putting your angle of depression in between them. I know it's 35 degrees. Again, I'm gonna come down, creating a right angle. And I'm trying to figure out how far the boat is from the base of the cliff. So that will be that red line, which is congruent to this red line on top and I'm gonna represent it with an X. Again, if the measurement here is 80 on the left, it's also going to be 80 on the right. They are always going to be congruent. Now that I know that information, I can start labeling my sides. I know that the one that says 80 feet is my opposite, and I know that the one on top is my adjacent. So now I have to use tangent because that one is the only one that has opposite and adjacent. So tangent of 35 degrees is equal to 80 over X. Multiply both sides by X. X tangent of 35 equals 80. Divide both sides by tangent of 35. Put that in your calculator we do get x equals 114.3 feet. Hopefully that answers some of your questions. Don't forget to hit subscribe and thank you for watching.